everybody and welcome to this Euclid 6.3 uh, webinar. I'm François Legoff, I'm working on the Euclid pro product management here in NECA. So let's come to today's uh, webinar agenda. Um, I will start with uh, a generic introduction of Euclid 6.3, uh, this release, what it contains, and I will continue with uh, some specificities to, uh, concerning the format changes. Then I will hand over to my colleague, Eduardo, who will um, guide you through the web user interface and in introduce you to the main features. And uh, he will be followed by uh, Mark Roberts, who will continue with um, some specific um, in instructions on how the users can be supported via the web interface. And he will continue with the plans for 2019. As I said at the end of the webinar, we will have a question and answer session. Uh, and all the participants are invited to send uh, their questions and we will answer the most frequently asked questions. We are expected, expecting to um, end the webinar around 12.15 Helsinki time, so in one hour, a, a bit more than one hour. So let, let's go through the, the content of the webinar and start with the Euclid 6.3 release. I wanted to start with uh, uh, some uh, uh, information about the Euclid 6 website because we uh, usually announce the releases through these pages and we do that not only on the day of the release but a bit in advance so in case you want to know what is going on uh, in the Euclid 6 project or product you can go on the Euclid 6 website under the Euclid product page and you will see here that we have reorganized a bit the information uh, to uh, make it clear um, when the, the new versions are going to be released and also um, give extra information on what can be done with Euclid outside of the on top of the main features of Euclid. So on this page you will find uh, additional information on the Euclid format, on the public API if you want to connect Euclid, uh, integrate Euclid with your own system and also on the report generator. So in case you want additional information uh, on the functioning of Euclid, this is the the page or the place where you should uh, go in order to uh, to retrieve the appropriate information. We use the website also to publish news alerts, and we announce this release uh, that we was uh, made last week, already at the beginning of September, to give you a bit of a preview of what this new Euclid version will bring. And then on the day of the release last week, Wednesday late last week. Uh, the users who have subscribed to receive uh, notifications from the Euclid website have received uh, the news alert that Euclid was released. So I encourage you to go on the Euclid website and also to subscribe, su subscribe under my account. You can subscribe to receive all the news from um, the Euclid website and also some more technical information such as uh, changes to the API um, or uh, changes to the format that could uh, impact users at the technical level. Since last year, we are using also another channel to communicate with the Euclid users. Uh, it's uh, via a LinkedIn group. You can find uh, the link here to this group and you can request to join if you have, if you have a LinkedIn account. Uh, some example of posts that we have su submitted in the really recently by the group members. There was a post concerning the new web interface of Euclid 6, which will be presented uh, today. And um, there was also the, the notification of um, a Euclid training for BPR uh, users, so the users that are uh, involved in the bicycle product regulation in Europe. Then we posted also a short uh, article on how the new combined list of dossiers and datasets works in the web interface and Eduardo, my colleague, will uh, also go through this feature of the web interface a bit later in this webinar. And there was also another post on how to use Euclid, uh, the Euclid report generator, in order to extract use information uh, so that it can be, this information can be exchanged uh, with another uh, IT tools or another IT system. So before we continue a bit uh, with the content of this Euclid 6.3 release, I wanted to um, uh, give some information about the different ways we distribute Euclid. 
So there, there was, was some com confusion in the past since uh, we uh, went live with the Eka cloud services where Euclid can be uh, accessed as well. We, we did that in April 2017 and uh, it was the first time Euclid users could access a different user interface. Now you will see that with this Euclid 6.3 release, uh, we are back to one Euclid software. Uh, so the same user interface is available for all Euclid users, whether, whether they are uh, using the cloud services or the desktop version or the server version of Euclid. So it's one software of uh, one Euclid software that is distributed in different ways. The desktop and the server version that can be downloaded from the Euclid 6 website and installed either on your computer or on your uh, server and then uh, made available to all your users in your organization. And the third possibility is also to subscribe to Eka Cloud Services. If you have to uh, submit data to Eka, then this is a convenient way to access Euclid and, uh, to, and not to have to um, pay attention to the new versions or the maintenance of the soft software because this is done for you uh, by the the persons maintaining this cloud pl platform. And this is a good opportunity for me as well to indicate that the cloud instances, so if you have um, a Euclid um, application in the cloud, this will be updated to Euclid 6.3 this week. The migration has already started, so maybe you already have uh, Euclid 6.3, but if not, in the coming days, you will have access to the latest version of Euclid in the cloud. So let's uh, go back to the scope of Euclid 6.3. And this scope can be uh, is composed of three main areas. First, the series of fixes and improvements that we uh, introduce in all Euclid releases. Uh, all new versions is uh, containing fixes and improvements. Then I will uh, continue with some specific information about the format changes that are introduced to this version. And uh, we'll continue with my colleagues, Eduardo and Mark, uh, a bit uh, on the aspects of the web user interface. You, you can see all the fixes and improvements included in this Euclid 6.3 release um, in the release notes that are available on the Euclid 6 website. But here I have made a, a short summary of uh, some improvements that might be of interest for some of the users. Um, first, related to uh, bicycle products, we have extended the possibility to report more accurately information on microorganisms. And these are now uh, included um, a bit more clearly in the dossiers that are prepared uh, under the BPR regulation. Um, another aspect linked to uh, the BPR regulation as well is the, the first implementation of uh, basic rules basic rules for BPR dossiers. Um, this is uh, using the validation assistant, but not to the same extent as for uh, REACH, for example. Uh, for BPR, in order to check BPR dossiers, we have uh, implemented so far only two rules that were already uh, existing in previous versions of Euclid. So this is, uh, these rules were uh, previously executed uh, during the dossier creation. Now we have tried to uh, give um, a more uh, give the, the possibility to validate dossiers in a more generic way between uh, REACH, BPR and other regulations so that uh, the validation assistant can now be uh, run on BPR dossiers as well. Um, we had, uh, as I mentioned, mentioned earlier, a uh, IT training for BPR users in ECA last week and we are going to publish soon um, the recording of this training and also the presentation so if you want to have more information about the changes that are relevant for uh, BPR users, then you will be able to find uh, this information on the Euclid website and on the ECA website. This was done in relation with the uh, BPR stakeholders days of last week in Helsinki. There are other improvements to the validation assistant. Uh, we have improved existing rules that are used for the REACH regulation and the CLP regulation but without impacting the overall outcome of the validation. So we don't change the outcome of the validation with this release. There is no impact for REACH and CLP users, but we um, have made our rules uh, clearer and uh, more precise so that the, 
the outcome of the validation assistant can be more meaningful for users. There are also uh, new extensions that have been made to the validation assistant, and this concerns the poison center's notifications, and I will come back to, to these aspects a bit later in this presentation, and also um, the inclusion of uh, draft rules for Australian dossiers. I will also come back to, to these uh, the parts related to format changes. But again, if you want to have a full list of uh, fixes and improvements included in, in this release, uh, you can download the release notes from the Euclid website. So let's see a bit uh, in more details the format changes that are introduced with this new version. And I will uh, start this section with uh, some uh, overview of uh, what is the Euclid 6 format and what is the purpose of um, having a, uh, an IT format or an XML format uh, that is harmonized with uh, multiple organizations. So Euclid is implementing uh, formats, data st standards that are um, have been developed at the OECD level. Uh, and the most visible part of this format is the, the OECD harmonized templates. And the, the aim of this template is, is to harmonize the way uh, we are all uh, industry users and organizations are reporting uh, test summaries for chemicals. So the, the structure of the Euclid uh, format is based on, on a certain level of harmonization between reach between different organizations internationally at the, the OECD level. And um, there is an agreement between across juridis jurisdiction uh, to use uh, the OECD harmonized templates and also additional data format provided by Euclid. But there is also um, a part that is uh, uh, left to uh, specific organizations to, to be defined. And this is the what we call individual definition providers of the Euclid format. These are um, data formats that are specific to uh, some organizations. With the Euclid 6.3 release, this is now how the, the Euclid format structure looks like. You have a... Um, the highest level of harmonization, which is the OECD harmonized templates, and also the, some additional Euclid uh, formats to define, for example, substance identification, substance composition. And this is something that is uh, made available to uh, ECA users, um, but other authorities in EU and also in um, OECD member countries. Then, uh, as you know, we have a customized Euclid in order to serve the specific purposes of our uh, European regulation, REACH, CLP, and BPR. And uh, recently, with this uh, 6.3 release, we have uh, worked in collaboration with Australia as well in preparation of um, their new um, IT system for uh, the, their legislation for industrial chemicals. So we are in EU, in Australia, and in other OECD member countries using the same uh, base set of data format harmonized at the OECD level uh, under the OECD harmonized templates group and the Euclid user group. But we can also define our own templates to require in order to requ request some specific informations that are relevant uh, for a specific regulatory context. If we go more into the details of the Euclid 6.3 format changes, you will see that there are several points that we wanted to address with this release. Uh, the first one is the evolution of the regulation uh, that are already supported by Euclid, and one of them is the CLP regulation. As some of you might know, uh, we there was an update of the CLP regulation to um, um, re revisit the way the submission of information to poison centers was, was made. So in the new regulation, specific information requirements are listed for uh, to be submitted for to poison centers. And ECA is now, now playing a role in defining the format and also providing uh, an optional uh, joint portal for submissions to these uh, poison centers. It was decided that Euclid would support this uh, uh, new part of the legislation in order not to create a new yet uh, another data format and also to benefit from the tools set of tools that are already available. So this was uh, one of the um, 
item of the scope of the Euclid 6.3 format changes to accommodate the needs of the poison centers in Euclid. We are always also uh, following the updates and new test guidelines, uh, which um, were uh, developed at the OECD level and then translated into OECD harmonized templates. So every year there is a set of modifications or, or new templates that are coming from the OECD. And then we have also uh, taken into account some issues or improvement requests from uh, received from the user uh, community uh, in NECA, in MSCAs, in industry using Euclid, uh, and uh, also in OECD member countries. And here you have an examples, an, some examples of uh, changes that were uh, re requested. One of them is the addition of polymer information, which is not relevant uh, in the EU context, but uh, is an information requirement uh, important for uh, Australia, for example. Uh, quickly, more details on the poison centers, um, because we, we say that the Euclid 6.3 uh, contains the format that uh, should be used for the poison centers, but doesn't mean that uh, the notifications requirement for poison centers uh, are starting now. There is a specific timeline uh, that uh, the poison centers are following. And the first submission, the first notifications uh, following the, the new format and the new information requirements will start in 2020. Uh, already in 2019, ECA has to put uh, in place a system that allows these notifications. That's why there will be a, another Euclid update uh, for uh, Poison Centers users at uh, the beginning of, uh, of next year. And in the first time, this will happen uh, only for cloud users. This is, in, in a nutshell, also the, the information requirements for poison centers. So what type of information is required for poison centers notifications? Uh, we need to know uh, some details about the submitter of the information, uh, mixture information, uh, pH, the mixture composition, a unique formula identifier, and also some information about the packaging and the product category. And as I said, the new harmonized format uh, chosen for uh, the submission of this information is uh, Euclid. These are more details about which aspects of Euclid have been uh, found as relevant in this context. So out of all the Euclid documents that are existing, more than 100, then uh, more than 300, 17 have been selected to be reused for PCN notification. So it's not the same complexity as uh, registration do dossiers and the reach, for example, but we have selected the parts of the Euclid format that are uh, relevant to fulfill the obligations under the poison, poison centers update of the CLP regulation. So as I said already, partly um, the release plan for poison centers is uh, as defined here, um, we are now, after the Euclid format update, we are working on the, uh, the creation of a Poison Centers notification wizard in Euclid that is planned for early 2019 that will initially only be available via for the cloud users and then to all Euclid users in the next uh, planned Euclid release uh, in April. Here I, I have uh, added also some information about the, the modifications that were made to uh, the documents. A lot of documents have been modified to follow the latest OECD harmonized templates, for example. You will see in the list that the uses documents have been modified, but these are the uses documents used um, at the OECD level. For each purposes, we are using a different set of documents. We are, we are not fully harmonized yet with the OECD. So for rich users, there is no impact be because these uh, used documents used for reach regulation uh, have not been modified. So I go quickly through that as well is the list of uh, documents that have been modified to support um, the poison center needs, for example, but also the improvements we did for the biocidal product regulation users and for Australia. You can have a look at at the list and you can also ask more precise questions if you are interested in a specific uh, change if you want. But all the details of these format changes are published now 
on the Euclid 6 website. You have the address here. And um, if you are interested or if you need to understand uh, precisely the format changes, uh, do not hesitate, hesitate to contact us via the help desk and uh, we will guide you through this documentation so, um, so that you can identify the relevant information for your uh, own purpose. I think the, the main message for data providers, so the main message for Euclid users is that um, a new version of Euclid does not mean that you have to change anything to the way you are working. For example, uh, it really depends on, on the regulatory authorities that are using the Euclid format. For example, ECA for REACH, uh, BPR and CLP, um, the Euclid 6.3 format is not mandatory for any of this regulation with the exception in the future of the poison centers, because poison centers will have to use 6.3 uh, in order to pre pre prepare their notifications. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, REACH and other CLP notifications or BPR submissions are impacted. They are not, and uh, all their versions of Euclid can be used uh, still for this, for this purpose. So Euclid 6.3 will be mandatory for submission to poison centers uh, at least the format. And for BPR users, of course, if you want to benefit from the uh, improved structure for macroorganisms information, then you can use uh, Euclid 6.3. And how do we manage to change the format without impacting the users is by um, updating the Euclid tools and the Euclid format. So first, uh, updating the validation assistant or the dissemination preview so that these components of Euclid behave exactly as before. And we also support the migration between uh, Euclid versions so that data can be exchanged between Euclid users. This aspect of uh, data migration, which is quite important when we talk about uh, format, data format changes, is a bit more uh, um, described here in details. Um, as with all Euclid 6 versions, we ensure forward compatibility. So all your Euclid 6 files can be open, opened with the latest version of Euclid 6. Even Euclid 5.6 files can be uh, loaded into Euclid 6. And we also continue to ensure backward compatibility with the previous major version. So for Euclid 6.3, it means that uh, files that um, it means that Euclid 6.3 can export files that are compatible with Euclid 6.2, but not with Euclid 6.1 anymore. That's why we recommend uh, Euclid 6.1 users to upgrade to 6.3 at least, in order not to experience difficulties in exchanging data between, uh, uh, between different organizations. And you see on the screenshot the, the way um, it works to export data to the previous major version. It's part of the export assistant of Euclid. So <clears throat> that's all for this uh, overview of Euclid 6.3 and uh, more information on the data format. I will now hand over to my colleague Eduardo, who will, uh, who will uh, guide you through the main features of the web user interface. Good morning. Um, my name is Eduardo and I'm a member of the Euclid team. And um, what I'm going to present you now are a few screenshots of what the web user interface looks like in Euclid 6.3. So as my colleague Francois said uh, before, um, last year, uh, in views of the REACH 2018 deadline that we had this, uh, this year, uh, ECA developed the Euclid Cloud Services. This uh, Euclid Cloud Services included the web interface that uh, it has been now adapted, taken on board for the new version of Euclid 6.3. Uh, one of the reasons, uh, so a couple of years ago, a few years ago, we, we developed Euclid 6 and it was a time to change the application, but the interface, it was a good moment to change it now after the the release uh, having the base of, uh, of the cloud services. And also because there are some, uh, some uh, uh, current uh, obstacles, uh, for example, the European Commission has recommended not to use uh, applications that run, that run WebStart Java 
uh, components. And so this was a very good opportunity to, to move to the web technology. And this is what we have done now with 6.3. We also acknowledge that uh, we will have a, uh, there will be a transition period. And for that purpose, we in this version of Euclid 6.3, we still provide both interfaces, the classical interface and the new web interface. With the plan and the idea that by uh, in the future, we will only maintain one of the interfaces. And my colleague, uh, uh, Mark will afterwards explain a bit more on the plans that we have. So, as the web interface that we have now in Euclid 6.3 uh, has been inherited from what we have in Euclid Cloud, and, it was, uh, and that was designed for the rich uh, SMEs, uh, it covers at the moment the web interface is able to, to store all, allows you to store all the data and to create all the dossiers that you need for submitting to ECA. So you basically are able to uh, create substance and dossiers. Do uh, you have a validation assistant, CNR, CSR generator, dissemination preview? So there are many basic functionalities that are already available in the web interface. There are a few things that still might not be yet uh, ready. And for that, we have still uh, uh, have the classic interface available. So I will show you now what we have in the web interface and, uh, and that starts with the new launching screen. For the desktop version, there's a pre-launch screen that allows users to select which interface they want to use. So basically, you will be able to start using the web interface right away or you can always come back to the classical view. Uh, in this sense, we allow users to make the choice at any time by, allow, by having this pre-launch screen always available in your screen. So it basically, it's very easy to shift from one to another one. For the Euclid server version, the user, your, user, your Euclid administrator will be able to give you the, the, the URLs, the, the links, the shortcuts to the application as usual. Nothing changes in that sense. And you are able to access the web interface or the classical inter the classic interface at any time. Remember that when you're using the web browser, and I will have a few slides afterwards uh, to talk about the, the, the benefits of, of the web browsing, you will be able to shift and you will be able to also remember the password. So you have to be careful. You have to take into account this, how you want to work with your browsers. So basically, basically once you have uh, download Euclid, install the application. This is how it looks like. This is the main Euclid, the dashboard of Euclid. The first, one of the first thing you can notice here is the simplicity, the few components, elements that there are in the, in the, in the screen. You have, I will go back to the search dossier by UUID afterwards, but basically you have the dashboard where you have the main menu and you have few widgets. So one of them is the guided dossier preparation that my colleague and Mark will explain afterwards. But we have a new way, a new concept, how we have uh, implemented and displayed the substance and dossier. We have now this substances widget and the concept that I will explain right now, it applies as well for, for mixtures. On the right side, you also see we can import uh, files by dropping them in the in the area import area or by the and also select several to do a bulk import so this is the new view of the substance of the same dossier the new approach combines into a unique list all the substances in the dossier that are grouped together the dossiers are differentiated from the datasets by the image of a lock as you can see in the screen so basically, the, la the, latest dossier, the latest dossier created or the latest substance that has been that data set that has been modified will be directly accessed via this entry point. What we have done compared to the classic interface view is to, do, instead of having two entry, several entry points, we have combined everything into one. 
which allows you to easily access and navigate from the, the Substance datasets to the related dossiers. In this screen, you can also search for the substances by name, which is the field on the left. And on the right side, you have another option to sort the, the substances by name or date. If you have more than 25 uh, substances, datasets, and dossiers, an pagination is also available. When you access a substance dataset, this is what you can see. There are different, sec different areas that I will explain right now. For example, on the left side, on the top, you can see the breadcrumb. This breadcrumb is a path that will be guiding you or telling you where you are at any point in time when you are navigating through the substance datasets or the dossier and the different documents and endpoints. On the left side, you can see the table of content, which is quite if you are familiar with Euclid, this, you will recognize this as it's the same we have in the classic view. The table of contents allows you to navigate from section to section by simply clicking in one of, the, in one of those. And the circle with the number indicates and gives you a hint of the number of documents that are available for each section. So you don't have to go to every section one by one to see if there is something. And this already hints you if how many documents there are. On the right side, you can see some of the basic functionalities available for, for Substance datasets, like to generate the CSR report, to export the dataset, or to save into a PDF. You can also validate your Substance dataset or create a dossier, a dossier out of it. More on the on the on the substance datasets here are the templates the templates that are existing in the database can be selected from here if you want to create a template you need to go to, uh, currently to the classic view but here you will be able to see for each doc uh, a section when you have a document created in your uh, substance dataset or inherited from a template. The one in inherited from a template cannot be deleted directly here, and you will have to access the template to do that. If we continue to look at the Substance Dataset view, we can see that one of the first things we can do uh, to take benefit from, the browsing, from browsing an application with a web browser is that we can do a simply Control F to find any content in the page. So basically, Control F and typing, for example, in this case, use, will indicate everywhere where we have use. By default, all the sections of, of the Substance dataset are expanded. But if you want to limit the search to certain sections, you can collapse some of them, and you will only see those results that are applicable. All the information you see in the page can be copied, and there are no grayed out texts anymore. Another important aspect of the Substance Dataset view is the submission type. Here, we can select any, sub any submission type we want and edit the dossier header. For that, we can select, for in this case, we have selected the rich registration 1 to 10 tones, and you can have several selections done. A link to the submission type allows the users to edit, and the data is never deleted. It's just a different way to display the information according to the submission type that you have selected. When we are in the Substance dataset, we have a possibility to view all the related dossiers. By simply clicking in this button, you will, be, you will be have listed all the dossiers available. Dossiers, you can see that there is an icon of a lock. So it's easily, you're, they are also um, sorted by date. So basically, the latest one, you will have no problems to see or to identify which is the latest dossier related to this substance. When being in the substance dataset view, you can create new documents, but you can also copy 
from existing documents. To this point, and contrary to how it is managed in the, class, in the classic interface, we don't have a clipboard anymore. So there's no way, to, we don't have to manage copy and copy-paste uh, information. The new concept and the new approach to the copy functionality is based on copy from an existing document that is in the database. And so you go to the target place, to the target substance, and you copy from existing, and you're able to copy endpoint summaries and endpoint study records straight away. You don't have to access this one substance data set, copy, open the, the target substance data set, and then paste it. You just go to the one you want the information to be at the, at the end. When reading content on an, on an endpoint, for example, there's a, we have implemented a very cool uh, functionality in, for the web UI. Sometimes there's many, doc, many uh, fields that are empty and, and they disrupt the view of the full uh, document. So you're able to now filter those fields that are empty to have a clearer view of the information that is available for every record. In the same place here, we can check uh, attachments and annotations. This is, this is a better way to display the information and to find everything you need that is available for this data set. Looking at the attachments, now it's very easy to just click on the paper and the paper clip that appears on the, on, the, on the screen when you are in edit mode. And if you have sufficient and appropriate access rights, you can view, edit, add, or delete attachments at any time. You can also make comments to each other, to all the attachments, which are only visible when you access in edit mode. Another thing you can do easily in the web interface is to share access to other colleagues or parties of your substance. For that, from the, from the, uh, the substance and dossier view, you can easily right click on the menu and share with the group that needs to be needs to be available if you want the substance to be read only read write or read write and delete if we go back to the euclid dashboard i left before the search to see by uuid that you can see on the top right corner of the screen the search to see by uuid is the best way to find any dossier that you have in your database and it accepts only UUIDs from dossiers that are complete. If they are complete and they find it in your database, the dossier will open automatically. But in certain UUIDs of other elements like substance data sets, records, will not provide any result. So this is only for dossier UUID at the moment. When looking at the dossier view, you will see that it's similar to the, to the data set view, but you have a distinctive image of a log on the right top corner on the screen. This means that this, you're, you're navigating now through a dossier. You see the, the, uh, the, the list of functionalities available are now different. So you, can you have the dissemination preview as well and the comparison tool available. The table of content on the left is follows the same approach as in the Substance dataset. And on the bottom, you can see that you can view the other dossiers that might be available, or you can go to the source. This means that you can go back to the Substance dataset if the dataset is available. Now let's take a look at a few of the, few of the functionalities available for dossiers. Uh, actually, the first one that I will check is the validation assistant, which is also available for datasets. And for this, in the new web interface, we have integrated it a bit better by allowing the users to navigate through the, the issues that they encounter in the datasets by allowing them to show them the, result, the error message that appears in the validation assistant. Basically, the validation assistant goes through some of the business rules that are applied for your substance, depending on the template that you have selected, the submission type, sorry, that you have selected, 
and it gives you and it go helps you and guides you to uh, fix them. This is important because you will be able to create a dossier with without errors or with less errors, and you will then be able to pass the validation assistance well in the dossier before submitting the dossier to ECA. Just briefly, I'll talk about the dissemination preview tool. It's a feature that allows you to display and to give you a hint of what information will be published and what information will not be published in the ECA website, if appropriate, of your dossier submitted. This CSR, the Chemical Safety Report Generator, allows you to generate a chemical safety report from sections one to eight. And if you need to include other a full CSR with exposure assessment and risk characterization, then please go and use CASR for that purpose. Export works similarly as in the classical view. You can export if you have the appropriate access rights substance, mixtures, dossiers, as you need. The only thing you need to be careful is that when using the web browser, you need to know how it works because some of the most popular web browsers have a slightly different behavior when it comes with how to save data from the web, from the web browser. So in this case, as Internet Explorer, we may ask you how, what name uh, to save us and you can indicate the name. Firefox and Chrome by default will just save the file uh, including the UUID as a file name. And with this, I would like to indicate to come and to link with some of the benefits and differences that comes with using the internet browsers when using Euclid 6.3. Export, as I mentioned before, export files can have a different behavior. You also have to you also allowed to change the fonts, to resize the screen, and to take all these benefits from using a web browser into your into in, when you when working with Euclid. We have tested it with most of the with the, most of the popular web, uh, internet browsers, and the, the functionalities are practically the same. The response is the same. But still, if you have any feedback to us, we will be happy to receive it in our mail or if you have an issue to contact the ECA, uh, ECA the help desk. One more cool thing that uh, we have now when using Euclid 6.3 with a web uh, interface is that every single page that you see has a URL. This means that you can easily bookmark where you are in a substance or in a dossier and continue working afterwards at any time. You can also share this link to a, with a colleague and the colleague will be able to access if he or she has the access, the appropriate access rights directly to the same element that you are working on. Another not good thing that using the Euclid web interface has is that you, go, you can open multiple windows to work at the same time in different with different parts of, of, of your data. So basically you can open a new tab or you can open a new window and continue working in that and have, if you have several screens, you can have multiple windows to, to work easily. So just to wrap up and to recap on the benefits of using the web user interface is that Euclid 6.3 is compatible with most popular web browsers and it eases the navigation because you can re re uh, resize the fonts, you can zoom in and out, and if you have a touch screen, the use of it is very friendly and it can be quite nice for you. The typical control F where you can find information, you can select and copy anything you see in the web page is also quite useful. And as I mentioned before, you can bookmark the URLs and share with your colleagues or have multiple windows to work. Some of the features have been re-implemented to improve the user experience. And if you're using the, the, the server version as a client, as a user, you will see that there's no, no need to 
to wait for you, for the web start to start because you just go to the web link and it works. The simpler interface also allows you to clean the information you don't want to see or that is empty by the hide functionality. And there's a new way to handle document uh, attachments, annotations, but also there's a few other improvements that my colleague will, Mark will explain now. So with this, I would like to thank you and give the floor to my colleague, Mark. Thank you, Eduardo. Uh, my name is Mark Roberts. I uh, support the development of Euclid here in ECA. Um, today, I would like to take you through um, the support that's available in the web user interface. Um, I'd like to take, to take you through some of the plans we have for 2019. This will maybe answer some questions that have been coming through uh, through the chat, the WebEx chat, and uh, a couple of additional uh, Euclid features. So firstly, if you use the web interface, in the question mark in the top right hand corner, you'll notice uh, a number of different uh, support. Uh, if you click on the Q&As, you will go to the FAQ page on the Euclid 6 website. Um, this is a list of frequently asked questions which we normally receive through the ECHA help desk. We try to regularly update this to answer the most frequently asked questions that we are receiving. If you click on the create support request, um, this goes uh, to the ECHA contact form where you can uh, send a help desk question into ECHA. This can be both uh, technical or regulatory related. If you go to the additional information, this will go to the Euclid 6 website. And if you click the video tutorials, this will take you to the playlist we have in, U in YouTube, uh, which lists all the different Euclid video tutorials we've made so far. For this release of Euclid 6.3, um, we've added uh, a couple of new video tutorials, so how to open uh, the new web interface, for instance, and how to uh, bookmark your substances, your mixtures, etc., which Eduardo just explained. These uh, two videos are very useful, so I'd recommend to, uh, for you to check them out. Um, we've, also, we've also improved a couple of existing videos, so for instance, for the key functionalities of Euclid, and um, also getting to know the web interface. So I'd recommend you to have a look at these video tutorials and, um, and hopefully you can get a few hints of how to use the web interface from them. In the uh, classic interface, all the existing help and support remains as usual. So for instance, for the, the functionalities manual is still available. Uh, the embedded submission manuals and guidance are still there. But in the web interface, we've actually updated the functionalities manual so that it corresponds to the new web interface. Um, currently, we've only updated the English version, uh, but you can access older versions um, of the functionalities manual in all EU official languages. Um, the functionalities manual is also very uh, accessible. Um, it's the question mark in the da uh, next to the search by DOSA UID in the dashboard. And you can also find this question mark when you go to the list of substances or mixtures, or if you're in a, uh, a read-only uh, document. Okay, so moving on from the functionalities manual. Um, oh, one last thing actually I should say, um, when new features are added to the web interface, the functionalities manual will be accordingly updated. So this will be included in, in future releases of Euclid. There is other support available uh, for you as well. Um, in December 2017, we released um, a thing called a guided dossier preparation tool in the Euclid cloud. This was designed to support infrequent users for the REACH 2018 deadline. Um, in 2019, early next year, uh, this will be expanded to also include Poison Center notifications so people can prepare their PCN notifications through the guided dossier preparation tool. Just to recap, um, this tool um, offers you a task-based way to prepare a dossier. Um, it gives you tailored help text and embedded links. Um, it also includes a dossier creation and validation step, so you can do the whole preparation uh, with this tool. And it allows you to switch back to the regular data set view at any time if you have additional information uh, to include in your dossier. With regards to the help that's available through the Guide Dossier Preparation tool, this is a bit unique, uh, different to the uh, regular interface. 
Um, if you create a REACH registration using the guided dossier preparation tool, uh, you'll find links to the relevant ECHA support pages, for instance, the Q&As for REACH, the guidance for REACH importers and manufacturers, a nutshell guidance on registration, for instance. Um, you also see when you're actually at the task level, uh, you'll see specific task-related help. So, for instance, um, if you're in the substance identity, <laughs> identity task, you will be able to uh, find help specific for this uh, task. For when PCN arrives, you will see a similar kind of layout. You'll see links to the relevant PCN support pages, and you also find specific guidance for the task ta for the task at hand. So, for instance, getting the unique formula identifier or going to a product product characterization system. So, moving on. Um, this maybe is answering a couple of your questions that have been coming in through the WebEx chat. Currently, we're here now in October 2018. You have both the classic interface and the web interface available for you. Um, we hope that um, by October uh, in 2019 that we can replace uh, the classic interface with the web interface. Um, this depends on the, our stakeholder feedback and the level which we've reached with regards to the development of the web interface. Um, this is planned for all Euclid users, so for it will be affecting industry, ECHA and MSCAs and other uh, international users of Euclid as well. In the April release, uh, service release next year, it will be the same as this release, so we'll give you the opportunity to use both the classic and the web interface. So um, in terms of uh, examples of Euclid features, currently not or not fully available in the web interface. Um, here's a sort of brief list of what's not available in the web, web interface yet. Um, some ones to point out for you would be the advanced settings for dossier, ex, for dossier creation, export or print. Um, the bulk operations, so when you want to print uh, Euclid files in bulk or you want to delete Euclid uh, documents or substances in bulk, for instance, this is not available yet. Um, the management of entities is not fully uh, available yet in the web interface. So for instance, uh, using the inventory management tool to clean up your uh, entities or indeed um, editing uh, entities on a uh, entity by entity basis. We also don't have a complete report generator yet. Um, you can generate a CSR using the web interface, uh, but you can't gener generate all the other inbuilt reports that are available in Euclid. Also, the user um, management and roles are, are not fully implemented yet, so you can't go and um, create new users, for instance, in the web interface. All these are available in the classic interface, but not yet in the web interface. So our current plans for the web uh, interface uh, for the next April uh, service release of Euclid includes the list you see in front of you. Um, this includes an improvement to the generated comparison report. Um, I will move on to this actually a bit later about the comparison report, so I'll leave that for now. Um, it will also include um, a advanced dossier creation. So this will uh, allow you to uh, make advanced selections when you're creating your dossier. So for instance, including the legal entity in the dossier header um, or including a certain confidential information. Um, we also hope that uh, users' information will be stored in the, in the advanced dossier creation steps. So if you've selected that you want to include your legal entity, uh, the web interface will remember this and save it for next time. This uh, won't uh, include a document selection step, as this will come a bit later. Currently, um, when you use the web interface, you'll notice that when you create repeatable blocks, so for instance, uh, multiple constituents in your composition record, um, you'll see these listed as uh, one, two, three in the web interface in edit mode. Uh, we plan to improve this so you can actually get to see uh, what's behind all these repeatable blocks and you'll see some key information. Uh, we also plan to include a feed calculator. Uh, this is already included in the classic interface, as you know, but this will be included in the web interface as well. Um, we'll also in, uh, make available the ability to generate all available reports in Euclid for datasets and dossiers, and we'll also display the legal entity in the combined substance and mixture product lists, which Eduardo took you through earlier. 
So we've also got some items for analysis um, over the coming months. We want to um, find out whether we can uh, improve the rich text component of the web interface so that when you start um, inserting tables, for instance, um, into rich text uh, fields, that these will be pasted correctly. Um, we also want to uh, find out if we can reuse advanced options, as I mentioned before, and include this for all the different uh, advanced features of, of Euclid. And uh, we also want to investigate a document selection process in the advanced operations. So the current plans for the web uh, UI include um, implementing uh, the categories, templates and entities fully. So hopefully by October uh, next year, you'll be able to create categories, you'll be able to fully manage your templates and fully manage your entities. Um, we also want to implement these analyzed elements, which I just uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, we want to uh, improve the uh, dataset content navigation, the user profile, um, the basic search in Euclid in the web interface is not fully up to date yet. Uh, you can use the web browser technology to do some quick searches. You can search with dossier UIDs, but for instance, you can't yet search for the document UIDs from the UID search bar, so this needs to be improved, as well as some of the more advanced searches in Euclid which you do. So for instance, if you're searching for a particular reference substance uh, in your data set, uh, this kind of search would cover that. We also want to improve the um, error and exception handling in Euclid. As currently in the web interface, um, you get a basic error message, but you don't get a very descriptive uh, message about what's happened if something uh, goes wrong. So we want to um, improve this too. There are some other things which need to be included in the web interface, but uh, we're not entirely sure whether we'll make it uh, for October next year and, and get all these in. Uh, this includes the DNL and PNET calculators, um, a copy as reference feature, the advanced report generator where you can actually upload your own report templates, uh, the inventory uh, manager, so this is a tool where you can clean up um, your different inventory entities, and the full user role management um, profile in, in Euclid as well. So just to take you through a few other features that are, that are included in this uh, Euclid 6.3 release, um, the first of all, the dossier comparison report. Just a reminder, this feature allows you to compare the content of two dossiers. This can be a content of two substance dossiers or indeed two mixture product dossiers. Um, it gives you a, a field content comparison so you can directly compare what are the differences uh, between each field of Euclid. Um, with this version 6.3 of Euclid, you can now um, generate a HTML report of this comparison. Um, you can generate this report both from the classic and the web interface. Um, and I've got a brief, I've got a small uh, snapshot of it there, what it looks like. As I, as I said earlier, we're planning to make some improvements to this report in terms of the naming conventions, uh, how, it, how you can navigate it and things like this. Um, if you have some feedback on this comparison report, um, just get in contact with us and we'll be happy to uh, try to accommodate those, uh, those desires. We also have um, a couple of new reports uh, in Euclid for 6.3. We have an annotations report, uh, which you can generate from any mixture product data set or dossier. This lists for you all the annotations uh, made to any document in Euclid, including the substance in the mixture and mixture in mixtures. Uh, we also have a classification and labeling report. This can be generated from any substance data set or dossier. Uh, this is based off the um, info card design uh, on the dissemination uh, web, web portal and is meant to be used by lead registrants to communicate CNL information to member registrants. But of course, it can be used for other purposes as well. Just a reminder, um, the report generator uh, uses uh, report templates to extract Euclid information and outputs this in different formats. Uh, so when you have a report template ready, you just upload this to the report generator and you can generate the report. A list of all the report templates, which are both inbuilt into this Euclid package of 6.3 and the ones that are not inbuilt yet, but you can upload uh, yourself via the report generator, are available from the Euclid 6 website.
and a quick word about customizing your own reports. Um, more UK users are taking advantage of customizing their own reports to generate a standalone report summarizing uh, a particular set of UK information and data, and also to generate reports which can be fed into other IT systems. Um, so for instance, one report allows you to extract user information in a CSV file, which you can upload into another uh, IT system. If you are trying to create your own uh, reports and you're struggling or you're finding it difficult, just contact us and we can uh, help you to, to develop these further. You can see the uh, UCID mail uh, address there. So now I will hand over to Francois for uh, the Q&A. Uh, session. We've been receiving many questions, so I guess he's he's got some answers for you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Mark. And indeed, uh, we have received uh, almost 100 questions now, so my colleagues are uh, preparing answers and uh, answering to you uh, privately. Uh, but you can st still continue to, to send your questions and I will uh, uh, answer the, the most common one or the, the most important one in this session. Uh, before that, I wanted to start with uh, giving some updates about the number of downloads or number of users created on the Euclid website. So since October last year, we uh, register between 150 and 300 new users every month uh, on the Euclid we website. And um, since Euclid 6.3 was released, we have uh, several uh, Hundreds of uh, downloads of the de unique downloads of the desktop version, server version, and the updaters. So we have started to collect some user feedback already with the new with the, the new version, and I, I will come to, to that in, in the next slides. Uh, while I'm talking about the Euclid Six website, there is uh, one information I wanted to share with you uh, about the fut future use of uh, Eka accounts. So. The current situation with the Euclid and the Kesa website is that you need uh, your own user account in order to download uh, Euclid or, or the Kesa application. And uh, for those who are using other ECA services, such as Rich IT or R4BP3, you need a different or you are using a different account to uh, connect to this submission tool. In, uh, by mid-November, so in, in two weeks, ECA is going to extend the features of the ECA website in order to uh, um, allow a better subscription subscription to news alerts or to topics of interest for each user. There will be also a possibility on our dissemination website to uh, for the user to identify particularly interesting uh, substances in order to receive uh, information related to these substances. And there will be also a possibility to save searches that are performed on the uh, content of registration dossiers Disseminate, disseminated on the ECA website. So for this purpose, we need to use uh, an ECA account to store all these user preferences. And we are going to move uh, towards a unique ECA account for all ECA services. This will also include access to the Euclid and Kesar uh, website. So what is going to change for you? And of course, we will uh, give you more information in due time. But Already now, what we can say is that if you already have an ECA account that you use, for example, for Rich IT or R4BP, you will be able to use it uh, also for the Euclid website. So it's one less uh, username and password to remember. Uh, you can use the same account for accessing also the Euclid and Kesa website. The, if you don't have an ECA account already, uh, you, you will have to create a new one in order to access uh, the Euclid and the Kesa website. Again, so it's more work for you, but what you gain from that operation is that you will uh, have access to other uh, services provided by ECA and including this new possibility to uh, uh, to record your preferences while using the dissemination website. So let's go back to the Euclid 6 release and to continue with the Euclid 6 website and the way we handle user feedback uh, that we receive concerning the release. We use um, this uh, part of the website that contains frequently asked questions in order to include standard answers to most uh, frequently asked questions. So we, we have added new entries with the Euclid 6.3 release. Uh, the first one is, um, 
can you use Kesa 3.3 with uh, with Euclid? Um, and what is the consequence if you upgrade to Euclid 6.3? So unfortunately, uh, Kesa, the new version of Euclid is not compatible with the existing version of Kesa. But on the 5th of November, our Kesa colleagues are going to release a new version that will be compatible. So our advice in this uh, uh, Q&A is that for Kesa users to wait for the new Kesa versions before uh, updating to uh, Euclid 6.3. We are working on improving this uh, uh, this mechanism, this compatibility between Kesar and Euclid, and uh, next time uh, we should get rid of this issue and keep the compatibility between uh, softwares. The next question is the the possibility to have uh, more than one user interfaces open at the same time. Um, it's now possible with the the web interface. So if you use the web interface, when you install UK 6.3, you can open uh, different windows in your web browser. So that's an added value for that was introduced by uh, my colleague Eduardo. You can now open several uh, windows to work with Euclid. Then we have added some uh, information about using different versions of Euclid 6 desktop uh, at the same time on the same machine. So if you are interested in knowing how this works, for example, to have a Euclid 6.2 version running with the Euclid 6.3 version, it's a bit complex to manage, but if you re really uh, need to do that, then you have some instructions on the Euclid 6 website. Then there was a question about what happens with your data when you mig migrate um, to Euclid 6.3. There we give some indication that um, you don't have to upgrade to all intermediate versions of Euclid 6. You can directly uh, download Euclid 6.3 and the uh, installer of Euclid 6.3 will get you, get you through the um, migration steps. So if you have already Euclid 6, just download the updater and you will be upgraded to the latest version of, uh, of Euclid 6.3. Um, either whether you start from Euclid 6.1 or Euclid 6.2, uh, this is handled with the same updater. Then we have received some feedback concerning this release. Uh, you can see uh, highlighted in, in blue with the uh, blue uh, character there, there on the left, two issues that were reported from users and that have been confirmed from our side and other issues that have been uh, discovered unfortunately after the release. These are not uh, seen as critical, so we are going to update the list of known issues on the Euclid 6 website and make sure that these issues get fixed in the next uh, planned release in, in April. So the first issue is, is with the fee calculation. You should be aware that if you use the fee calculation uh, in Euclid, confidentiality claims on registration numbers are not identified. Then there is also some uh, uh, incorrect behaviors that are happening uh, sporadically when you use the validation assistant to uh, check the linking uh, between the composition information and the classification labeling information. Um, this issue is difficult to reproduce. We have not been uh, made aware of uh, this issue uh, by, uh, by users, but only by uh, uh, automated tested, the testing that was implemented in, uh, in Euclid, but after the release. So, our recommendation, if you observe this issue, is to restart Euclid and uh, uh, the, the issue will not appear anymore. We are still monitoring this issue, so if that would be more problematic for more users, then we will provide a patch. But in any case, if you experience this issue, you should contact the help desk and we will um, provide some uh, options for you. There were some reports about dossiers that were incorrectly migrated to Euclid 6.2. Uh, we received that uh, from time to time and now our recommendation is to upgrade to Euclid 6.3 and then the data set available in your database will, will be fixed and you can create new dossiers that will be uh, fixed as well. So that will uh, be valid for submissions to ECA, for example. There is another issue that was identified by us is the search for templates in the web UI. Um, Although the full list of templates is correctly displayed, when you search, when you use the filter in the web UI, then the list is not uh, updated correctly. So it's not working uh, as it should. 
and the last issue that was reported by a user is uh, the fact that usernames containing spaces uh, cannot log into the web user interface. So if you have a space in your username, then you won't be able to use the web user interface. There are some workarounds, so we we are not aware of uh, many users having spaces in their username, but you can contact the help desk uh, to have uh, further instructions from us how to get rid of this issue.